Welcome back. I'm Callie and we're here today at Beyond the Pale, one of our favorite microbreweries. Let's check out what's going on inside. So I'm inside here with Rob and Shane, brewmasters and owners of Beyond the Pale, and we're going to learn a little bit more about the company itself. So why don't you guys tell me a little bit how you got started, the history of the name, what else is going on here? Turns out that we really like beer, Kelly. That's probably the first thing. Uh, we thought that we were interested in doing different beers, and uh, the idea came from wanting to push the envelope. The name Beyond the Pale uh, it comes from uh, comes from Ireland. They had a little picket fence around the around the city, and uh, the people that were on the outside were considered the outsiders. They were beyond the pale. So that was that was the idea behind it. Um, and I understand you have sort of an initiative going on this summer. It's called uh, the Community Grow Hop. Uh, yes. And I understand that's about bringing your customers in and having them. Not be to involved. be confused with the Grow Hop that's down not the street. The grow, <laughs> not the Grow Hop down the street. Right, the grow this is hop. the Grow Hop, exactly. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about that initiative of sort of bringing in customers and helping them have a hand in what you're doing here. Absolutely. Well. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole idea is that we wanted to uh, just kind of engage the community, get them involved in a beer that we were going to make. So um, we'll teach them how to grow hops, how to you know, take care of them, and, and essentially teach them when to harvest them. So upon harvest season, we can get everybody in the community who grew them to bring the hops into us, and we'll make a beer with those community grow hops. So uh, it should be a fun little project. So that being said, if anybody at home is interested in being a part of the Community Grow Hop initiative, you can grow your own hops at home, learn from these guys how to do it, and then be a part of their actual brew making. So I understand you guys had many options as far as location went for your first brewery. Uh, what has it meant to you being involved in a community like Hinton? I mean, it's meant a lot to us, I guess, you know, being here and doing what we do. One of the biggest things is that we get to interact with our customers all the time, right? And that's kind of unique in in where we're located and uh, the people that we get to see. And so we get a lot of feedback from them about what do they think of this beer? What do they think of that beer? Do they think beers are shit? These are things that we need to know, you know? And that's uh, extremely valuable for us. And was that sort of a driving force in deciding to open your new location within sort of, you know, proximity to where you have sort of founded your company? Was that a deciding factor? Yeah. We wouldn't have moved if we couldn't have found a space close by. We found a space local, nearby, same kind of retail philosophy to the area. And yeah, it, Without it using works. Without a clientele base, obviously. Absolutely. So would you guys be open to taking us on a tour of the things you have going on here and maybe letting us know about what you're hoping to do with your new space and how you're hoping to sort of impact your Depends, Callie. Would you be open to doing five shooters of beer before we go? I mean, I've never said no to beer shooters. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> Work. That'll wake you up in the morning. Okay. Onward. Welcome to our little brew house. Grab my little beverage. This is basically uh, sort of the where the action happens, I guess you could say. This is Shane's baby. This is where he spends most of his life. I won't let him talk about it because it'll take way too long. You guys get the gist though. This is where the magic happens. This is where we brew our beer. So, when we started out, we were uh, extremely small. We had about a thousand square feet and it pretty much stopped right here. Uh, we had a little cold room at the end of the way there. We had a couple of plastic fermenters along this line and that was it. And we realized pretty quickly that that wasn't going to work, so we punched a hole in the wall. So why don't you... So basically we came through the wall, moved back here. You can see we moved from three to five plastics. We still use them. Uh, we also got a sweet loaner from Bose and they gave us two fermenters and a couple of bright tanks, which are in our cold room over here. So yeah, now we've got a couple of cold rooms. We've got uh, about this much fermentation space. And part of the reason for the move is that we need to grow. We need to be able to put out more beer. Our capacity here, we, we put out around 14,000 liters a month and it's just not enough, so. And how do you hope to change that? With your new location, obviously you're gonna have bigger, more space. You're gonna have an ability to produce more at a faster rate. Bigger system. 
bigger system. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go to tanks that are twice the size of these. So we're 15 barrel system, 30 barrel fermenters and brights. This is a 15 barrel fermenter to give you a sense. So twice the size of what you're looking at here. Cool. Uh, this is sort of the end of our tour. We're in a pretty little space. We, as you can see, this is why we're, we're busting out of the seams right now. We got our little office space up top that we uh, that we squeeze a couple people into in our back room. But uh, the brew house is where the brewing business gets done. This is where my business gets done. And so, so moving forward, we're looking forward to uh, sort of seeing what extra space you're going to have and how you're going to be able to accommodate more people in your new facility. Yeah. So we should check that out. We should definitely check that out. You want to roll there now? Let's go. All right. Well, this is it. What do you think? Wicked.